Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is May the 5th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Last night was very fun. I uh, went out to a friend's birthday. Um, Shout out to KP. Happy birthday. Uh, Let's see. Then outside of that, we just did like some overall north side hangs with the homies. So it was just overall a really good night. Uh, Let's see. Food Corner. Food Corner was real good. Uh, We went back to Tickle Pickle and Tickle Pickle was back on hit again. And it was very yummy. Uh, let's see. I got the Hamstein again. I think that's just my, my burger from them. You know, it's got sauerkraut. It's on a pretzel bun. It's pretty crazy. Um, I decided to roll the dice and I added onions and tomato and that was a good call. I figured it might have made it too sloppy like I had the last time, but at the same time, it was just the right ingredients. It worked out. Uh, let's see. I had some pickle spears those were, uh, those were, I was about to say, ooh, I was about to be too candid. They were so good. They were so good. Uh, they came with like a ranch um, um, dressing dip thing, and they were fried pickle spears. I should add that. So, yeah, they were definitely worth. Had some fries, and then I had another shake from them, and it was very good. Uh, the It was like a strawberry shake. Uh, it, was, it was good. It was very yummy. Uh, all right, so I mean, we're, we're caught up on the food and what I was doing. Oh, oh, one more thing. Also, I had this crazy cheese. I think it's called like green sage cheese or something like that, um, which was uh, part of like the little birthday charcuterie board. And I think they got that cheese from like Marshall and Nosh. That cheese was insanely good. I haven't had a cheese that good ever. And like, I don't get me wrong, I like cheese. I'm a cheesy guy, but like, This cheese looked funky, was funky, in all the right ways. So I had to mention that. Uh, But yeah, overall, had a really good time. Uh, The weekend's been good. I've been so sleepy. I've just been so sleepy. (laughs) Um, Sleeping a lot, or maybe catching up on sleep, because I didn't sleep much last night with all the hanging out. I don't know. But, you know, we got some groceries in today. That was fine. Um, But yeah, you know, it's been a good weekend. It's been solid. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do our startup, and we'll get into some news. Hopefully that sounds good to you. All right. Ooh. Actually, shout out to my friend Heather. We did two birthdays. I'm realizing that. And like the haze of, of last night, we birthday hopped. And I was like, oh, shit, yeah, so there was two birthdays last night. That's crazy. Uh, whew. All right. Well, uh, we talked about birthdays. Let's uh, talk about some death days, sadly. Um, from Reuters. Death toll from southern Brazil rainfall rises to 75. Many still missing. Uh, the death toll from heavy rains that have caused flooding in Brazil's southern state of Rio Grande do Sul has risen to at least 75, local authorities said on Sunday, with tens of thousands of people displaced. President Luis Ignacio Lula, Lula de Silva arrived in Rio Grande, on, Rio Grande do Sul on Sunday, along with most members of his cabinet, to discuss rescue and re- reconstruction works with local authorities. The death toll uh, could still substantially increase to 103 people, um, as 103 people were, 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 oh, gosh, were reported missing on Sunday, up from about 70 prior the day, uh, up to about 70 the day prior. According to the State Civil Defense Authority, It also said it was investigating whether another six days were related to, or another six deaths were related to the storm. Let's see here. It was raining on Sunday morning on Porto Alegre, the capital of Rio do Sol, and in other parts of the state, which could make rescue efforts even harder. 
Flooding from storms in the past few days has affected about two-thirds of nearly 500 towns and cities in the state, which borders Uruguay and Argentina, leaving more than 88,000 people displaced. Uh, let's see. Um, that's what I really want to pull from here. Um, oh, I might have passed it. But yeah, I mean, obviously, just the situation is not looking too good in um, Brazil right now. In Porto Alegre, the uh, Guabla, uh, Guaibla, Guaibla, Guaiba, Guaiba. There you go. Try that. Uh, the Guaiba Lake broke its blank banks by more than two meters or seven feet hitting the highest water record uh highest water level on records according to the national geological service porto alegre's international airport has suspended all flights since friday so yeah just a lot of damage uh, a lot of loss of life due to uh, this flood uh seems to be like a, an, an el nino kind of event uh, you know, I, I still think you can trace these kind of things to climate change, though I know that can kind of sound redundant to say over and over again. But, um, you know, definitely um, my thoughts are with the people of Brazil right now. I know that's a lot to go through. It's very scary. It's very harrowing. Um, hopefully, you know, they can just rescue as many people as possible, you know, in these kind of situations. That's really all you can do. And, yeah, you, this is where you really hope that it's like, hey, you know, my, my, my country can really come in and help me out. You know, this is when the, this is where you want the National Guard. I don't want to see the National Guard on a fucking, you know, campus, you know, trying to break shit up. I want to see them, you know, helping out when there's a storm, when there's floods and shit like that. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and hit the next beat uh, da, 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 da. Um, from ABC News. Vehicle crashes into White House gate killing driver. Secret Service says no threat. A vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed crashed into a gate at the White House complex late Saturday, killing the driver, a U.S. Secret Service spokesperson said. There was no threat to the White House after the vehicle crashed into a barricade just before 10.30 p.m. Security protocols were implemented as officers cleared the vehicle and attempted to render aid to the driver who was discovered deceased. Um, I believe that more or less this happened because the driver was speeding. So, you know, that's unfortunate. But, I mean, outside of the fact that this was just an incident in front of the White House, which we've covered, you know, uh, in something like this before, I believe, like last year or so. Um, but, yeah, you know, still unfortunate, still sad. You know, someone died. But, you know, definitely just be careful out there, y'all. Like, it's, it's, it's not nothing. Don't be too fast and furious out there, okay? You're not Paul Walker. And if you are, well, then you don't want to be, right? You know how that ended. It's kind of the same way. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. Uh, let, let's, let's move on to the next beat. From the Associated Press, Israel orders Al Jazeera to close its local operation and seizes some of its equipment. Israel ordered the local offices of Qatar's Al Jazeera's uh, satellite news network to close Sunday, escalating a long-running feud between the broadcaster and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's hardline government as Doha mediated ceasefire uh, negotiations with Hamas hang in the balance. The extraordinary order, which includes confiscating broadcast equipment, preventing the broadcast of the channel's reports, and blocking its websites, is believed to be the first time Israel has ever shuttered a foreign news outlet. Al Jazeera went off Israel's main cable and satellite providers in the hours after the order. However, its website and multiple online streaming links still operated Sunday. Uh, let's see here. Al Jazeera issued a statement vowing it will pursue all legal channels through the uh, through international legal institutions in its quest to protect both its rights and journalists, as well as the public's right to information. Israel's ongoing suppression of the free press, seen as an effort to conceal its actions in the Gaza Strip, stands in contravention of international and humanitarian law, the network said. Israel's direct targeting and killing of journalists, arrests, intimidation, and threats will not deter Al Jazeera. Israeli media said the order allows Israel to block the channel from operating in the country for 45 days. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
according to Netanyahu, he feels like Al Jazeera is a mouthpiece for Hamas, which I think is crazy to say because these people are reporting on actions that are going on in the region, in Gaza Strip, in the West Bank, and essentially you're mad because, yeah, you guys are the one perpetrating the goddamn atrocities. It's insane that these people that, you know— with the IDF and, you know, top brass in, you know, Israel are just like, oh, you guys are reporting on us? That's bad. That's illegal. You can't do that. Like, but this is supposed to be a democracy. I, it, that that irritates me to no goddamn end, especially when I see things like the Jerusalem Post. That's pretty much like the New York Post. Um, just allowed to say and do whatever it wants, spin it, narrate it however they like. And um, that's fine. That's okay. Um... But yeah, I mean, I find this to be very frustrating. Um, but I know that it hopefully it is just a forty-five day ban. Hopefully, after that, after the forty-five days, they lift it. But um, let's see here. Uh, the Israeli government has taken action against individual reporters over the decades since its founding in nineteen forty-eight, but broadly allows for a rambunctious media scene that includes foreign bureaus uh, from around the world, even from Arab nations. That changed with a law uh, passed last month, with Netanyahu's office, uh, which Netanyahu's office says allows the government to take action against foreign a foreign channel seen as harming the country. And, and see, that's the thing that's just so frustrating, is that like, oh, the freedom of press and all that kind of shit can just be shifted if we're saying, oh, we have to worry about defending ourselves or this and that. And it, it's it's just so weird because it's like we, I mean, as Americans, as the U.S., we allow Israel to kind of have these, like, you know, stop valves of saying, like, hey, you know, we can be a democracy, but we can also do this and do that. And then, like, yeah, that makes us maybe not a democracy, but, like, it's okay. You know, we're close enough. We're, we're democratic enough. And, you know, um, you know, the U.S. isn't bad either that shit. It, we're, we're like, oh, no, that, that's our buddy. That's our ally. You know, just like us. Same. Twin. And uh, I, I just, it's so weird. It's so bizarre to me that this happens. And it's frustrating. Um, but I, I just definitely wanted to make sure that I gave it, gave it some coverage today. Talked about it a little bit. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to add. Uh, the ban did not appear to affect the channel's operation operations in the occupied West Bank or Gaza Strip, where Israel wields control, you could almost say occupies it, um, but which are not sovereign Israeli territory. Um, so yeah, I felt like that was another important part to add to this. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and move on. We can go ahead and call this covered. I just wanted to make a note of it. It's, you know, I just think it's really fucked up that it's like, hey, we're going to literally come, take your equipment, stop you from doing anything, and you just have to take that shit. Like, like what? Like, for doing what? For reporting on you guys? For telling the fucking truth? It's insane. Um, but yeah, um, let's go ahead and close out with um, a bit of the uh, campus and college, college campus and encampment stuff. Um, I, a little bit more news that kind of came down the pipe that I wanted to close out Sunday with, uh, but let's go ahead and do the last break and um, go ahead and wrap it up. From USA Today, USC closes campus, police tear down pro-Palestinian encampment. University, <clears throat> ooh, University of Southern California officials closed their main campus and brought in Los Angeles police to tear down an encampment Sunday as pro-Palestinian protests continue to sweep across the nation's universities and law enforcement is increasingly called in to disband the demonstrations. Despite the demonstrations being overall peaceful, um, yes, I know you can find some incidents that are pocket incidents where there are violence, and I, I still feel like looking at this across, like most of the counter protesters are not getting arrested. You're mostly seeing and hearing stories about people who are uh, trying to protest peacefully, you know, for Palestine, and essentially that they're being like, you can't protest here, you know the rules, da 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 da, we're coming in, we're bringing in the cops, we're busting this shit up. 
Um, it's been very unfortunate to see, but um, and, and some obviously in some ways I'm not surprised. You know, America's real good at that. You know, uh, we're number one for democracy, free speech, yada, yada, yada. But it's like, you know, free speech, but you got to do it the right way, okay? Don't be too annoying about it, all right? And, you know, then, then they break it up and they do what they're going to do. Uh, but yes, uh, the encampment on the school's University Park campus was cleared early Sunday morning after scores of protesters pitched tents and erected banners at Alumni Park. An hour before police arrived, a warning was issued to protesters. Uh, the UPC has been closed as a result of significant activity at the, camp at the center of campus. The school said on social media, if you are in the center of campus, please leave. People who, do, uh, who don't will be arrested. We will issue another alert when it is clear to return. Um, so yeah, they, they went and did that shit. Uh, what else did I want to really pull from this article? There's a little bit more developments, and this is going to segue us into another article real quick. At uh, Chicago's, or is this was at the DePaul one? Or, no, it's coming up. Okay, so at Chicago's DePaul University, Chicago police formed a line Sunday to keep separate a pro-Palestinian protest and counter-demonstrators counter -demonstrators who arrived on the scene. Police in Charlottesville took apart an encampment at the University of Virginia on Sunday, making about two dozen arrests. Uh, dozens of demonstrators were arrested outside of the Art Institute on Saturday after they barricaded and locked the gates to fortify their position, Chicago police said. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is kind of, just a segue to another one. Uh, 68 people wound up being arrested at a pro-Palestinian protest outside the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, police say. Uh, dozens of arrests were carried out on the grounds of the Art Institute Saturday morning. Um, that's just kind of kind of redundant. I don't really need to read any more of that. Sorry. Um, let's get back to the other updates. Uh, dozens of demonstrators were arrested out. Oh, I, sorry, I already read that. My bad. Um, uh, what else did I want to pull here? Uh, there was a little interesting interview from CBS's uh, Face and Asin that I kind of wanted to just talk on real quick. Uh, Jordan's Queen supports U.S. student protesters. Uh, Jordan's Queen Rania, in an interview for CBS's Face and Asin, expressed support for U.S. students protesting the Gaza war. She acknowledged that the emotions are running high at some campus protests, but said many people are losing sight of what promoted the protests. Gaza in the last seven months has become unrecognizable, she said. Cities have turned into a wasteland. Rania, who is of Palestinian descent, said Hamas absolutely does not represent the majority of Palestinians. She acknowledged the rise in anti-Semitism and said it was wrong for any student to or it was wrong for any student to feel unsafe on their campus. But for protesters, the issue is social justice. They are standing up for human rights, for international law, for principles that underpin international law. They're standing up for the future that they're going to inherit. Um, I like that quote, so I, I just wanted to, you know, kind of close out with that statement, uh, which I am in agreement with. Um, but yeah, that, that feels good. I am sorry for a little bit of a slopper, sloppy episode, but I mean, hey, this is just really how we do it around here at the new stand. Um, actually, I am going to close out. I know we talked a little bit of hip hop news. Um, there was another diss track. Kendrick made another one. He, he's just not stopping. And, um, actually, uh, one of my friends hit me up when I was hanging out and was like, hey, the, another one came down. But I, I, I add that just to say, too, that it's nice when you guys hit me up about, you know, the pod. It, it always feels good, you know, because essentially they said, hey, I saw that you had had a notification about this. I already heard about, you know, the, the beef. So I'm definitely going to be checking out your episode. Um, I, I appreciate that shit. I always appreciate when y'all show love, um, when y'all tune in. I think that's great. I love getting to interact with my friends about the news. It's definitely a big reason why I still do it, why I got into it. Um, so yeah, um, just thank, thank you so much for little interactions like that. That shit really makes my day. And um, hopefully we can do more of them. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.